Hey guys, welcome back to the Pulling Curls podcast today on episode 111. That's right, 111. We're talking about feeding babies. I think, you know, we get in a zone where like we feed them one thing, but how do you change the lane? Let's untangle it. the curly head behind the Pulling Curls podcast, where we untangle pregnancy, parenting, home, and even travel. We know there's no right answer for every family, but hopefully we can spark some ideas that will work for yours. Life's tangled, just like my hair. Okay, guys, before we get started, I know a lot of you guys find this podcast on my blog, but did you know that you can subscribe and you can get every single episode? It's like the Disneyland of podcasts. Definitely subscribe on your favorite podcast player. And while you're there, leave a review, leave some stars, leave some words. It really makes a difference. Okay, so today's guest is Evidence-Based Mommy. She's actually been on the podcast a few times. She knows all about the chemicals that we need to keep in or out of our lives in order to keep ourselves and our family safe. I want to introduce my friend, Samantha Radford. Are you overwhelmed by all there is to do around your house? As a new mom, I felt overwhelmed at every turn. Fortunately, I turned to systems to make a change. Whether it's mornings, dinner time, or even just to climb out of a pile of kids' clothes, my course, Family Routines, can save you. I hold your hand as we smooth out these rough patches, making every day easier so we can more easily handle when your preschooler tells you they can use their urine like a lightsaber. Parenting is always going to be a wild ride. Routines are just your seatbelt, and they can support you. Use coupon code UNTANGLED to save 15% at check out link in the show notes. Hey, Samantha, welcome to the Pulling Curls podcast. Hey, Hillary, how are you? So good. So good. I don't, I'm not in this phase because I hate giving baby solids. <laughs> it's so much easier to sit on the couch and give them a bottle. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you know, we've got a couple dogs. So like they kind of help clean up whenever he throws stuff, you know, so yeah, that's true. No, I just had a vacuum. Yeah. <laughs> it's just messy. Like it's fun to see them like trying new things and all those kind of things. It's messy and it takes time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's true. You know, with the older ones, I can be like, make yourself a sandwich. And there is something to be said for that. Yeah. Except <laughs> they don't make a sandwich. They just go get chips. That's what my kids do. Actually. Yeah. Okay. That's also true. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you've had a baby. They've been breastfeeding or formula feeding for a while. How do you recommend? Now, I know you're you're talking just from a mom point of view because you don't have a, like a big degree on breastfeeding, although I don't even know what that degree would be. <laughs> I mean, like patient consults and stuff. I've done a lot of research as far as like learning about the chemicals and all that, but that's a whole nother... Yeah, this is just kind of more from the mom perspective today. But just stopping that baby from making their main source of nutrients breast or formula? What's what's the good plan? So I wouldn't even like look at it as like stopping them from that so much as it's like a slow, gradual process, you know? So for one thing, the CDC tells us don't give your child any solids until six months. So just keep them on just formula or breast milk until six months of age. And it's concerning because even now there are plenty of pediatricians out there who will try to tell you to put your child on rice cereal or whatever, you know, much younger than that, but you don't need to. So basically you want to wait, you want to see that your child's at least six months or thereabouts and that they can sit up on their own, like maybe not perfectly, but if they're kind of just like slouching over in their high chair and about to fall over, that means they're not ready yet because there's a tie between how well they sit up and how developed their digestive system is. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I, I had a kid that was just like not ready to be in the high chair. So yeah. And, and that, and the beauty is, is like in a couple weeks, they may well be. Yes. It's not like you're going to be waiting months for that baby to get that muscle control. It feels like forever when they're tiny, especially the first time around. But then all of a sudden, you know, a couple months later, yeah, they're eating everything. The other thing, bef 
before they're ready, they'll have a reflex, like a tongue thrust reflex, where if you're trying to like shovel baby food in their mouth and they're not ready yet, like they'll poke their little tongue out and try to get it out of their mouth. It's like their body's way of protecting them from choking. Yeah. Thank goodness for that, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because then eventually they just put everything in their mouth instead. Yeah. So if it's not working, like don't try to push it and just wait. Yeah, that's such good advice. So on my first one, I waited longer than I probably should have. I would recommend like giving it a whirl at six months because I think I waited till nine months and he wanted nothing. He just wanted that bottle every meal. He wanted nothing to do with anything else. Yeah. I ruined him. I mean, different kids take to it. Like my two girls, the older ones, like took to solids really quickly. But my little boy and I started him at the same time. I was six, like five and a half, six months. And he didn't really get to where he was interested in food until he was like a year. And it's not that I did anything different. It was just that he was different, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Also, I felt like on my third, like I didn't have time for baby food. I just smushed up whatever I made and I stuck it in her mouth. I actually, I never did baby food. So have you heard of baby lead weaning? I mean, I've heard of it, but it wasn't really a thing back in 2000 when I started being a mom. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. So the premise is that instead of either buying the jarred stuff, which gets expensive or, you know, or the little packets that they have nowadays or trying to squish up your own food, because that just sounds like way too much effort for a mom who already has kids and maybe a job and a house and all that kind of stuff. You pretty much take whatever you're going to be eating. You don't add salt. You could add any other seasonings, but just like lay off the salt and you pretty much just put it in front of their kids and, you know, let them try. So my kids, like some of their first foods were banana. You can kind of squeeze a banana to get it to come out in the thirds or little slices of avocado. And it worked really well. Yeah. So with that one, are you also done just watching? Because you probably don't want to give them like a whole thing of like a penne pasta, right? Because if they get that whole thing in their mouth, they're not ready to chew it. Well, okay. So anything, you'd be surprised how strong their little gums are, even if they don't have teeth yet. So anything you can smush between like your thumb and your forefinger, you're good to go. In fact, like be careful, like if they just have those little front teeth, don't give them something crunchy because they might be able to like bite that off, but then not grind it up with their molars because they don't have molars. Gosh, what was the question? I've (laughs) Just like choking hazards, like how do you mitigate? So they remember they have that tongue thrust reflex. And a lot of times one of the things like Like my mom used to get really stressed watching my baby eat because she was scared to death that she would choke, but they don't. They might gag a little bit, but that's actually a good thing. So you just wait and they kind of get it out themselves. Like it's better to let them sort of work through that than to try to fish something out because you might accidentally like shove something further down their throat. I will say that I think all moms of toddlers should learn CPR. Well, I think all people should learn CPR, Mm -hmm. but I've definitely yanked a kid out of the high chair and done it because they they aren't moving air. Now, if your kid's coughing or gagging, they're moving air. Yeah, you're okay there. So fortunately, I haven't dealt with that. I should renew because it's been years and I'm not, you know, in the medical field like you are to where I'm into that kind of stuff more often. I will say that infant and toddler very rarely changes. Like what we do like at the hospital with CPR does change, but, and it is great to get a refresher or something like that, but really infant and child CPR is pretty much the same. And so much of it is choking. Yeah, or drinking. Browning if you're in Arizona. <laughs> yeah, I know that too. It's about that time. Okay. So I think that's awesome because I did full on jarred baby food with child number one, which is probably not unusual because you don't know what you're doing at all. And it's that's what they marketed. Yes. And then by number three, I like I just didn't have the time. Although we still had some of the jars around. We had a few packets, or I just open a thing of applesauce and shove it in her mouth sometimes. Sure, yeah. 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 There's nothing wrong. I will say we were so worried about allergies. My mom is celiac intolerant. And so on my first kid, they were like, don't feed him wheat. Second kid, they were like, we don't know. Third kid, they were like, feed her wheat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mine all had, of course, we don't have any of that you know, running in our family, but mine all had wheat pretty early because another thing, like if you just give them bread, you know how bread kind of gets to where it sticks to the top of your mouth sometimes? Mm. That's less than ideal. But if you toast it first and you can cut it into little sticks, that's another thing with baby lead weaning. Sticks are easier than like small little bits of food because if you cut it into like a little piece, they're not able to grab stuff with their finger and thumb. That's called the pincer grip. They don't have that till like eight months. But if you make something like, say, 
liked sweet potato that you roasted in the oven. If you have that cut into sticks, you know, they can grab on with their little fist and gnaw on it while they're holding on to it. Oh, interesting. That's a good point. Yeah, because like Cheerios, which was what we gave number one, those are hard to pick up. Like you really have to have a lot of fine motor skills in order to be able to pick that up. And it's like eight to 10 months before they can really handle that. Yeah, which I mean, Mother Nature did what's right because that is a real choker. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah, once again, I mean, there's reasons for these reflexes coming into play when they do, but it makes things a little bit, you have to think ahead sometimes. Yeah. Okay, so you're all about the pesticides and the things that we should be eating. Is there anything, like, should we be making our own? I have ground baby food before. Usually if we had like a lot from the garden or something was like super on sale, I would do carrots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I'm such a great mom. That's great. No, that's... (laughs) But do you think that's any better than just like, I mean, squishing up the lasagna that I'm going to have and putting it in her mouth? (laughs) I'm I'm all for giving my children lasagna and spaghetti and stuff. Those make for the best pictures anyways, right? But with that said, so for example, you ask about pesticides and that's like kind of a thing. A lot of times what you'll hear more of is heavy metals. So like lead or arsenic or something like that in baby food. And like every so years, like an article will come out that'll be like, there's lead in baby food and everyone will flip out and, you know, moms will swear that they're only going to make their own baby food like you were doing. And then like, we all forget about it. And then an article comes out again and we freak out again. And so the deal with that is that the lead or the cadmium or whatever it is you're concerned about is just like it's in the soil. And so it's already there. And there's really, unfortunately, not much you can do about it. And so whether you buy jarred baby food or buy your own produce, it's going to be there because, you know, they're growing the sweet potatoes that they use to make their jarred baby food in the same place that, you know, they're getting, getting sweet potatoes to put in the grocery store. Yeah. So like, don't break. Well, and there are some of those, like, I remember learning in nursing school that we have part, we have arsenic in our body. Like we need just a tiny little bit of arsenic, (laughs) just a smidgen. And that's, it's just in our bodies. So we all live with that. Yeah. I mean, like with lead, for example, there's no safe level of lead, but I'm sure we all have some lead. But I mean, there's little switches you can make. It's not so much about like whether you do jarred baby food or make your own baby food or baby lead weaning even. It's more about which foods you choose. So for example, I mentioned sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes tend to store lead and cadmium in them, like as they were growing. And so if like, you know, it's not like you can never give your baby a sweet potato, but you don't want that to be like the main thing they go for. So switch to say like butternut squash. So butternut squash or acorn squash actually is much less likely to have those heavy metals in them. And it tastes really similar, you know, so it's a win-win. Yeah. Well, and really just like trying to give them a variety. Yes, that's true too. So, and it's all those little tips and tricks, like most people wouldn't just know, you know, sweet potato versus butternut squash. That's the kind of stuff that I talk about in my, in my course. Oh, okay, cool. So do you talk about like what toddlers or I guess they're babies still at that point, what they should be eating? I mean, some, yeah. So I talk about, you know, like we talked about the pesticides or heavy metals or whatever in baby food. I talk about my thoughts on rice cereal, which spoiler alert, I'm not really a fan. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff about eating and even how you store your food. You know, do you use glass or plastic? How you cook your food? Like there's so much related to food and avoiding toxic chemicals. Well, and it sounds like there are just like small changes we can make. Yes. That could make a difference. Yeah, simple changes. Okay. And you guys, I have her course link in the show notes. So check it out in there. Well, this was helpful. Anything else to add about baby led weaning and feeding little babies? I mean, just kind of have fun with it. Make it easy for you. So if the jars are easier for you, like go for it. That's okay. But baby led weaning has advantages. Like I'm able to eat my meal while my baby eats my meal and he's happy and I'm happy because I'm not you know, having to wait to eat. It's good. It gives the kids a chance to try all those different textures and flavors like you were talking about with variety. Like there's a lot of advantages to it. So, you know, just try it. Basically, if you have a food that's right, like squishiness and you just want to let your child try it, that's all you have to do. It doesn't have to be like a big production. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there, because with my first, like I noted like what we were feeding him and then what reaction he had. And I don't know if some of that was because of my mom's eating issues, but I didn't do that at all with baby number three, which isn't shocking. I mean, there's so many things I didn't do with them. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, I would go crazy doing all that. Like 
you don't, you don't want to make things so stressful that it's a chore or, you know, just, just have fun. Like it's fun to watch kids try stuff. Like let mealtime be fun. Yeah. And if you see a reaction, then you, you should backtrack probably. Right. Like, absolutely. Yeah. X, Y, Z happened. Let's try. And I will say there's definitely a time for jarred baby food. Like when you're at a restaurant and you're with, I don't know, you just decide what works for you, but we're not saying that jarred baby food's bad, but it is definitely not super convenient when you're, cause they're so small and they take up so much room. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Great advice, guys. I say go early. Try it at about six, but you don't have to make it like a big deal. Just stick them in the high chair so they can enjoy mealtime with you and it can be a fun time for your family. So great advice. Thanks. Okay, guys, hopefully you guys found that helpful. Actually, after I stopped pushing record, she's doing a summit where she's talking about like toddler weaning. And I do see a lot on TikTok. There's moms who are like, I want to stop breastfeeding, but I literally don't know how because, you know, you're that baby's like main thing. So there's lots of information out there. I'll try and throw a few links in here. Also, if you're looking to like be done with breastfeeding, obviously solids are just an addition to breastfeeding for that first year. But after that, you can start thinking about getting your body back if that's what you want. Some people don't. That's totally up to you. Like I say in the intro, no solutions right for every family, but hopefully you can try something that works for you. Thanks so much for joining us on today's episode. We know you have lots of options for your ears and we are glad that you chose us. We drop episodes weekly and until next time, we hope you have a tangle-free day. 